We are going to solve that ambiguous case for the law of sines when you're solving for a side next to a side next to an angle. This is the side side angle case, but if you read this backwards, it's the angle side side, also known as and it makes it super easy to remember that there are two possible constructions. When you're taking the side of length six, the 33 degree angle and the side of length 10, you can either put the side of length six so that you have an obtuse angle. So we have an obtuse angle case, or you can position that side of length six so that you have an acute angle. Let's go ahead and label each of these angles so that we can start to solve. So we're gonna give capital letters to each of those vertices, A, B, and C, and then we'll do lowercase letters opposite for the lengths of the sides. So six is opposite angle A, and then we are missing side B. Same is true in, of course, our other case. We're going to start to find our missing angles inside by using the law of sines. The law of sines gives me these proportions. So the sine of A over side A is equal to the proportion. Sine of B over side B is equal to the proportion. Sine of angle C over side C. Let's go ahead and pick up the ones that we've got the most information for, and that's going to be angle A and side A. We don't have either angle B or side B, but we do have side C. So we are going to pick up the sine of angle A. Angle A is 33 degrees. Side A is 6. We do not know angle C, so we're going to say the sine of angle C but we do have side C and side C is 10. Let's give ourselves just a little more room here and we can continue to work through this. I need to cross multiply. So I'm gonna take the 10 times that sine 33 and the six times the sine C. So I've got six sine C is equal to 10 sine 33. If I divide both sides by six, I get the sine of C is equal to this. And finally, I want to apply a sine inverse on both sides. So sine inverse of the sine of C, which is going to give me angle C, is equal to the sine inverse of that stuff that we've got up there, 10 sine 33 all divided by six. Now we've got to be a little bit careful because I know that I've got sine inverse and sine and yeah, they do cancel each other out, but the sine inverse is a well-defined function, which means it's only going to give me a single angle back. We're in degrees here. So it's going to give me a single angle between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. It can only give me an acute angle. We're going to have to work a little bit for the second case, which is our obtuse angle. Let's go ahead and put this one into the calculator. I'm going to check and make sure that I'm in degrees first. To do that, I go into my mode. So mode, and then I arrow down and I see that I'm in radians. So I'm going to arrow over two degrees and hit enter. I'm good to enter this now into my calculator. I want to start with sine inverse. That's going to be second of the sine button parentheses, and now I want 10 sine 33, so 33 parentheses divided by 6 parentheses, and enter, and we end up with 65.19. Let's call that 65.2. So angle C is, whoops, so angle C is approximately 65.2. Now that is just one of our angle C. So it's right here, 65.2 degrees, but there's another angle whose sign is whatever that value was, and that's gonna be right over here. So the other angle with that same sine value is gonna be over here. So I need to take that angle and subtract it from 180. So C is either equal to 65.2, or this is gonna be our obtuse case, C is equal to 180 minus 65.2. If I put that into my calculator, 180, minus 65.2, I get my obtuse angle of 114.8. 
114.8. This gives me two cases. So I've got case number one with my acute angle, and I've got case number two with my obtuse angle C. Let's go ahead and do the acute angle first. I'm going to move some things up out of the way. So I've got my acute angle construction here. So I can go ahead and put in 65.2 degrees and I have one of my missing pieces. I also need to find angle B and side B. Well, angle B is the easiest one to start with. So to find angle B for this case, I wanna go ahead and take 180, which is the sum of all of my angles and then subtract the two that I now know. So I'm gonna take 180 and subtract 33 and subtract that 65.2. And I've got myself angle B, which is 81.8. So angle B is 81.8 degrees. I can put a box around that. I have two of my missing values. Now I've got just one missing value left and that is side B. To find side B, I'm gonna go back to the law of sines. This time I'm gonna go ahead and pick up side A and angle A in my proportion, and I'm solving for B, so I better pick up angle B and side B. So plugging in what I know, the sine of A, which is 33 degrees, divided by side A, is equal to the sine of B, which I now know to be 81.8 degrees. So I can say the sine of 81.8 all divided by side B, which I don't know. So I've got to do a little bit of cross multiplying to solve for side B. So B times the sine of 33 is equal to six times the sine of 81.8. That should be 81.8. And if I just divide both sides here by the sine of 33, I have that B is equal to six, sine 81.8 divided by the sine of 33 into the calculator that goes. So I've got six sine of 81.8 um, parenthesis and then divided by the sine of 33. And we get an answer of 10.9. This is side B and the last missing value for my acute angle case. So remember this was case one of two. So 10.9 is that final missing piece and I have got that triangle solved. Now let's go to the obtuse case. So here comes case number two. So when we first solved for angle C, we found that sine inverse gave us 65.2, but we were able to find the other angle with that same sign, and that would be 180 minus 65.2. This gives us our obtuse case with an angle of 114.8 degrees. So that goes right here, 114.8. So I've got angle C, I've got angle A, I need angle B. The steps are gonna be really, really similar. I do have side C, I have side A, and I need side B. Well, just like we had done in the acute angle case, I am going to find angle B by taking 180 and subtracting the angles that I know. See if you can come up with this same answer. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 33 minus 114.8. Let's put that in the calculator. Okay, what did you get for angle B? I got that angle B is 32.2 degrees, which looks super reasonable based on my picture here. So I'll go ahead and put in a 32.2. So I have got angle C, so I can put an angle there, and I have got angle B. I've got just one more missing piece, and that is side B. See if you can figure out how to come up with side B. It's really similar to what we did 
in the other case. Otherwise, you can follow along here with me. I'm going to use the law of sines to find side B. Again, picking up the things that I know, it's going to look so super familiar. I'm going to pick up the sine of A and side A. So the sine of A is going to be the sine of 33 over side A, which is 6. I'm solving for side B, so I better pick up sine B over B. Well, I know what that is now. So the sine of B is 32.2 divided by side B, which I don't know. I'm gonna do a little bit of cross multiplying here and I get B times the sine of 33 is equal to six times the sine of 32.2. So to solve for B, I need to do a really similar calculation. So six times the sine of 32.2, all divided by the sine of 33. Let me grab my calculator and get that in. As I'm grabbing my calculator, I'm actually gonna go back up to the last calculation that was similar for our other case. And I'm just gonna choose it. I arrowed up and then hit enter. And I'm gonna change my other angle B to my new angle B, which is 32.2, just typing right over it. And I come up with that length of side B and I get 5.87, let's call that 5.9. You did it. You are doing so great. Do take a look at this next video to help you with more of your trig. And thanks so much for watching.